everyone, it's Lorelai. It's been a week or so since I recorded my last devlog. I've made quite a bit of progress, although none you can actually see here, uh, so I'll show you later. Um, but because it's been about a week since I made all of these changes, I am a little rusty on what I remember of what I did. <laughs> so what I'm thinking of doing is making this less of a tutorial series, which it was never a tutorial. I just want to make that clear again. Uh, it was never a tutorial, but I do like trying to explain how I did things. It's going to be a little bit less of that and more, this is what I did. Deal with it. <laughs> You won't be able to follow along quite as easily just because it's been so long in between videos and uh, from when I actually did something. So in this episode, I'm going to show Deirdre's new ability. We finally have abilities beyond just basic attacking. Her new ability, Hop or jump, I keep switching between the two names uh, because she's a bunny, get it? <laughs> so she can hop and when she lands on enemies, she stuns them. Now you'll notice immediately that I have, first of all, health bars. These are just child objects that follow the player around. No big deal. And I also have hit text. The hit text is taken directly from Baz's tutorial on how to do hit text. So I'm not going to go over that. You guys can watch his video. Uh, it's basically exactly the same. Uh, but Deirdre, so we already talked about this menu at the bottom. It's just placeholder again, uh, so don't don't worry about the graphics. Uh, but we can hover over and see exactly what Hop does. So it jumps a few yards away. If I hold down Q, we get this magic circle. Wow! And if I go out of range with this magic circle, it starts it it starts to pulse and turn red. So that's pretty cool too. Uh, this magic circle will be the target of where I jump, and you can't jump into a wall. You can't jump into a wall. I made a fail safe there. So if I hold down Q and hover it over these slimes, you'll see that I kind of jump on over there, and they get a little stun marker. Now, unfortunately, I do want to make that stun marker above the health bar. That's something that I'll figure out later. I think I just need to change the display priority. But I'm already recording this video. I'm not going to go and freaking fix that. <laughs> Although, maybe I could. Mm, mm, I don't know. I set the display priority to 500 and it's still showing up underneath the health bar. So I'll figure it out later. It's not a big deal. <laughs> um, I can always just also change the Y. So actually, let's do that. Let's do that. Mm. Okay, there. Now it's above the health bar. It's much easier to see. Anyway, as you can see, it also started a cooldown. We got five seconds left, but if I switch to Nisha and I switch back to Deirdre, the cooldown still goes. So that was a that was a bit of a challenge, but I figured it out. So Nisha, uh, Belle, Fiona, and then back to Deirdre, and the cooldown is where it should be. And then once it goes off, also I can't press Q during this time. And then when it's off, it turns um, back to this blue color. And then I can jump over and and stun them. So that's my that's my ability right now. <laughs> uh, hopefully she'll have more abilities soon. But let's take a look at it. Uh, this is the attack. Begin jump, finish jump. That's it. I'm just kidding. That's not it. This is the actual attack. Uh, but maybe we should just start at the beginning. So all of this starts with the cursor, actually which I may or may not move, but the reason it's the cursor is because I wanted the magic circle that spawns to be a child of that cursor so that it'll just follow my cursor around without me having to do any extra uh, coding or um, XY following because it's, it's already kind of a mess with all of my XY tracking in this game. So under common actions, I've got this Q common action if right stick left is pressed. Right now I have the abilities set to the right stick, but I might end up moving things around if I ever do actually make this a console game. <laughs> uh, this might not be very intuitive, so we'll see. But right now it is Q. Right now it's Q for the keyboard. Uh, so once we press Q, we've got the magic circle being generated. Let's look at magic circle. Uh, magic circle will start here at check main character. So this magic circle will apply to all four of the main characters, but in this case, we just have Deirdre showing up. So if this is pressed still, so you have to hold down the Q. So it's continued to be pressed as opposed to just on press. 
And the current main character is Deirdre. And uh, her jump cooldown is off. If there is no cooldown, then we've got it uh, automatically in range in range here. And that just is just a motion. It's just a picture of the circle. In fact, I should probably change the title here, but it is what it is. Uh, when it is out of range, that's determined by uh, a switch. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember what exactly is turning that switch on. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Okay, so in Deirdre Playable, we've got Q out of range and Q in range. Okay, and we have all of the logic here. So the right stick is pressed. We've got uh, the range check loop. Okay, so that was apparently turned on at some point. Uh, and I'm checking to see if Q or my cursor is uh, 150 dots or pixels uh, away. So it has to be at least 150 pixels to Deirdre. And so then simply just turn the out of range switch to off so that the object knows that it is indeed in range. This is actually a remnant uh, from a previous iteration of this. I'm going to delete that, uh, but otherwise it's just turning these switches off. And if Q is out of range, similar logic, but checking if it's more than 150 dots away, then we're turning on these switches. So back to magic circle, uh, that is what's determining the in range and out of range. If you're out of range and you release that button, it'll just get destroyed. Nothing will really happen except uh, resetting these switches. Otherwise, it will activate jump. It'll activate the jump. If it's in range and it's on released, it'll activate jump, which in this case is just generating an, an object. <laughs> We're just generating a crazy amount of objects here uh, and then it, it's destroyed. It's generating jump target, which is this guy over here. So the first thing we've got here is idle. So that's the blue circle. That's a temporary placeholder graphic. I'll change that once we, or once I get actual graphics for this ability. So first of all, uh, we've got idle. Move to layer two. Uh, this was just because sometimes it was on layer one. Again, in my previous iteration, I don't really need this. I'm going to keep it on, though, just in case, because it's kind of important. There might be something else that I missed, uh, but you can probably ignore that. And release lock, because uh, that's just in case it was already locked onto something. Okay, uh, if it's not buried in a wall, then it will start to jump. Then Deirdre will start to jump. Uh, but if it is buried in a wall or if it's got contact with the tile's wall detection, then it's just going to be destroyed. Okay, so that's that fail safe. I hope that works. Then we have jump, which is a very simple execute object action. Deirdre's begin jump. Okay, so let's look at that. Deirdre's begin jump is here. We're turning on our attacking loop because this is going to stop her from doing this attacking sort of thing because attacking loop needs to be off for this to activate. We're removing the playable circle just because we're going to add it back later and I'll show you in a sec. We're turning off the HP bar because I noticed it was acting a little silly when I was jumping all around and then we are generating object Deirdre jump and this was the biggest thing. Uh, for the longest time I was uh, trying to get the jump working on this object and it just it just wasn't it was so frustrating but once i decided to just make a whole new object for this jump oh my gosh so much easier <laughs> so much better uh it's a lot smoother than it was it was it was hideous before uh, but this works a lot better so we have a whole new deirdre jump object and um this deirdre is actually set to no motion so she kind of just disappears and i've got move object this is just to kind of change her display direction uh, it doesn't really do much. Uh, but there is a generate object, Deirdre Jump. That's this chick. Hey. All right. So new Deirdre is generating the playable circle. And this is important because this is what the camera is following. I never made a video about the smooth camera because that was, again, like a Baz tutorial that I followed. And I wasn't going to make a video about someone else's, you know, tutorial. Um, but the camera follows the playable circle. And so I wanted the camera to follow her as she jumped. So we have a new playable circle. We are moving object. What are we moving? What's going on here? Oh, this is just for her display direction. Okay, okay. So she's just moving toward or looking toward the jump target. She's moving to layer one. This is just so that when she's jumping over anything, it is clear that she is jumping over something. <laughs> 
And then I've got free movement switch on. It's not really necessary because she has no collisions on this animation, but uh, I've been doing this just out of habit uh, because sometimes I feel like, I don't know, it was weird. It was weird with Deirdre Playable before I made this separate object, even though free movement was on, she was still getting stuck places. So I, I don't know. <laughs> so I just have this on sometimes just in case. And then we have generate object jump shadow and jump shadow is just for an effect. In fact, I think I have it just, yeah, under here, under effects, jump shadow. And when it begins, it shrinks because she's jumping up. So her shadow is getting smaller. And then at the end, it's getting bigger as she's uh, falling back down to the ground. So this is just a little extra thing that I did to make it look like a real jump. Okay, uh, so after that, we're waiting for the animation to play to the end. That's this animation I can I can show you in a sec. Then we've got jump, the actual jump, which is move object. We're moving to the jump target at 300% speed. And uh, I am moving, Deirdre is moving, this object is moving. We are matching the display direction. We're stopping all actions and animations during this move. So she's not going to do anything until she's done moving and she's not going to move her animation either until she's done moving, um, which is actually just this one frame. But you could have set, I could have set this to, uh, um, an actual animation here and then you'd be able to just pause it. it before that's how I had it is that she paused mid jump here so if I zoom in actually <laughs> so that she paused mid jump um but this I ended up changing it and so jump is now just this one I'm pretty sure it's just this one frame yeah okay then when that animation plays to the end as in I finished moving I play this jump animation which is just her landing okay I'm going to execute Deirdre Playable's finish jump action. I'm going to set Deirdre to my XY coordinates. And then I believe this is if motion plays to the end, uh, destroy. So she's gone. Bye. Bye, Deirdre Jump. Thank you for your hard work. Okay, so Deirdre Playable now finished jump. And she's also doing the jump end. She's on layer two just in case because again before I was moving her to layer one and I just I'm keeping that in <laughs> in case I miss something. Generating the play playable circle again. We are turning on the HP bar and then just in case I'm moving her X uh, Y coordinates to Deirdre Jump's X Y coordinates. I know we did it over here but I doubled up because sometimes she wasn't doing it. It was really frustrating. And then we uh go straight into idle. I think I, um, oh, if motion animation plays to the end, that works. That works. I thought I had a time on it, but that's cool too. So let's go look at the, not the status effects. That's next episode, the jump target. Okay. So we were idle and then we jumped. Okay. And then from jump to damage, we've got when Deirdre playable finishes the jump. Okay, when that action is happening, we're gonna go to damage. Damage is just this one square that has an actual damage collision box on it. So it turns yellow briefly. Again, these are placeholder graphics. And if uh, oh, like a 10th of a second passes, okay, I will stun. We will stun them. And I don't know if I should go over this right now. I think I won't. Uh, next episode. Next episode, we'll we'll talk about the status effects. Um, but then we'll stun, and then we will destroy that object. And voila, <laughs> we're stunning who we're locking onto. I guess that's kind of important. Is that we're locking onto whoever we attacked, uh, and then and then it uh, and then it gets destroyed. Okay. Okay. So that is how I made the jumpy thing. Oh, I didn't talk about the cooldown either. I guess that will be another episode. So there's there's multiple steps to this. <laughs> so it's not it's not like perfect. I think uh over the over the years of working on this game in the future, I'm going to have to kind of perfect some of this stuff because um I don't know. Like I don't know. Some it it feels so much smoother than it was. <laughs> Just take my word for it that before it was so clunky and awful. And this version is just much more smoother. Um, but there's still some things that are a little weird that I should probably, probably fix. But for the most part, it is fine. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll go over the status effect and the cooldown. And I think that's it. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye.